Welcome back, Falcons. I'm here to read to you from Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library, and it's just getting good. Remember, they were waiting at the end of Chapter 9 for Friday night to come and for the grand opening. Kyle had won one of the ten winners of the essay contest, and he was waiting patiently for Friday night, and finally, it's Friday night. So here we go, Chapter 10 of Escape from Mr. Cello, Mr. Lemoncello's Library by Chris Grabenstein. Now this is what I call a party, said Kyle's mother as she helped herself to a bacon-wrapped shrimp from a tray being carried by a waiter in a tuxedo. Kyle and his parents were in the crowded ballroom of the Parker House Hotel for the Lemoncello Library's gala grand opening reception. The Parker House was located right across the street from the old Gold Leaf Bank Building and the cluster of office buildings, craft shops, clothing stores, and restaurants called Old Town. I'm going to see if I can find Akimi, Kyle said to his mom and dad. Give her our congratulations, said his mom. We're proud of her too, added his dad. Kyle made his way through the glittering sea of dressed up adults. Even though his parents had put on fancy clothes for the reception, Kyle was wearing something comfortable to go exploring in, as instructed by the lock-in guide he'd received on Wednesday. He'd packed a sleeping bag and a small suitcase with a change of clothes, toiletries, and yes, as requested, an extra pair of underpants. Kyle saw Sierra Russell all alone in a quarter, corner near the, a clump of curtains. It didn't look like her mother had come to the party with her, Sierra, of course, had her nose buried in a book. Kyle shook his head. This girl was about to spend the night in a building filled with books, and she was skipping all the free food and pop so she could read. That was just nutty. Haley Daly, wearing a sparkly blouse, was posing for a wall of photographers who wanted to snap her picture. Her mother was at the party, too. While the cameras were focused on Haley's smile, Mrs. Daly wrapped up a couple of chicken kebabs in a napkin and slipped them inside her purse. Now Kyle saw Charles Chillington. Poor guy must not have read the memo about comfortable clothes. He was still wearing his khakis and blazer just like his dad. Kyle figured the Chillington family must own like 300 pairs of pleated tan pants. Hey Kyle, Akimi waved at him from over, a, over near a fake shrub curled to look like a silly straw. Hey, said Kyle. Did you remember to bring your library card? Yep. Kyle pulled it out of his pocket. Huh, said Akimi. I got different books on the back of mine. One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish by Dr. Seuss and Nine Stories by J.D. Salinger. Guess they're like baseball cards, said Kyle. They're all different. Hey, you guys. Miguel Fernandez, more excited than usual, which was saying something, pushed through the mob to join them. Did you try the puffy cheesy things? Nah, said Kyle. I'm sticking to food I recognize. The puffy cheesy things are called fromage tartlets, said Andrew Peckelman, coming over to join the group. Huh, said Kyle. Good to know. A waiter passed by with a tray loaded with, a small, with small boxes of Mr. Lemon, Lemoncello's anagram cracker cookies. Oh, I love these, said Kyle taking a box off the platter and opening it. The cookies are in the shapes of letters. You have to see how many words you can spell. Cool, said Miguel, snagging a fistful of cookies out of Kyle's box. Tastes good, too. Yep, said Kyle, but the more you eat, the harder the game gets. Why? asked Andrew Peckelman. Less letters, said Akimi, snatching two B's and a Q and wolfing them down. Mmm, barbecue flavored. Kyle spread out the remaining cookies in his palm. U, N, F, E, H, A, V. He grinned as he deciphered an easy anagram. Have fun, sweet. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, said Dr. Zinchenko, dressed in a bright red suit, strode to the center of the ballroom. May I have your attention, please? Mr. Lemoncello will be arriving shortly to say a few brief words. 
After that, I will escort the 12 essay contest winners across the street to the library. Therefore, children, might I suggest that you eat up? Food and drink are not permitted anywhere in the library except in the Book Nook Cafe, conveniently located on the first floor. Miguel grabbed a few more cheese, puffy cheesy things. When she thought no one was looking, Mrs. Daly shoved a napkin bundle of bacon-wrapped shrimp into her purse. Akimi nibbled a couple of chocolate-dipped pretzel sticks. Aren't you, going to, aren't you going to grab more grub? She said to Kyle. No, thanks. I only like food I can play with. One last thing, announced Dr. Zenchenko. We, of course, want our winners to have fun tonight. However, I must insist that each of you respect my number one rule. Be gentle with each other and most especially the library's books and exhibits. Can you do that for me? That's a really good role, right? Yes, shouted all the winners except Charles Chillington. He said, indubitably, Good thing the library has dictionaries, muttered Akimi. Half the time, that's the only way to figure out what Chillington's saying. Suddenly, all the adults in the ballroom started clapping. Mr. Lemoncello, looking like a beanpole wearing a tailcoat and a small, tiny birthday party fisherman's hat, strode into the room through a side door. Thank you, thank you, he said, stretching the elastic band to raise his kid-sized hat, kid hat and tipping it toward the crowd. You are too kind. With that, he let go of the hat. It snapped back with a sharp thwack. As Dr. Zinchenko informed you, I'd like to say a few brief words. Here they are. Short, memorandum, and underpants. And let us pause to remember the immortal words of Dr. Seuss. The more you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you'll go. Children? Mr. Lemoncello flourished his arm toward the ballroom doors. It's time to grow to go across the street. Your amazingly spectacular new public library awaits. So exciting. Okay, that is the end of chapter 10. I can't wait till next week till we see what's going to go on in that new library in chapter 11. All right, Falcons, have a great week. I will see you next Wednesday or Thursday. And happy reading. Bye-bye.